Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bible class. We are studying 1 John chapter 3, and we have a, a few new verses that we're going to cover. We're going to look at 1 John chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. We're going to look at three verses today, and let me just share my screen real quick share screen there we go sharing the screen and we'll get this over here and we'll bring this over here first john 3 19 all right so and hereby we know that we are of the truth. Uh, let me read back a little bit. Uh, verse 18, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. All right, so this is. This is a passage which talks about assurance. And it says, we know that we are of the truth. Well, how do we know that we're of the truth? Well, it says here, hereby we know that we are of the truth, which means by this, by this my little children let us not love in word neither in tongue but in deed and in truth and and we looked last week and we saw that in deed and in truth there and another way to say that would be let us not love in word neither in tongue but with genuine deeds because the indeed and in truth, they're, they're two words expressing one idea. So indeed and truth is actually what it says. And uh, the idea there is what kind of deeds? Well, true deeds. So I would, I would say genuine deeds are, is a good way of translating that. But, but with, let us not love with words, neither with our, with tongue, but with genuine deeds with genuine acts and and how do we do that well there's there's a number of ways that we can we can love people but but the point is show people your love right show people that you love them don't just say that you love them now we come to verse 19 hereby we know that we are of the truth well by what by these genuine deeds if we are loving other people and if we are showing other people, then it gives us assurance that we're following God. And we know we're of the truth and we shall assure our hearts before him. God has commanded us. And actually, think of what Jesus said. The first and great commandment is what? Love God, love the Lord your God with all your heart commandment love the lord your god thou shalt when he's asked what's the great commandment of the law jesus said thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets so in first john chapter three let us not or, or we know that our because of our love, because we are showing genuine love and we are acting on that and, and actually, and we are using our actions to, to show that love, then it says we can know that we're of the truth. Because, well, why? Well, because this is how Christians act. You're acting like a Christian. Now, that's not saying that someone who shows love and and that's all they do 
is, you know, can be assured that they're, that they're of the truth because, well, there's, there's other things that the scriptures tell you to do. And in fact, in Matthew chapter seven, Jesus says that there's many who are going to say to me, Lord, Lord, look at what we've done. Let me see. Ask and it shall the tree and his fruit. I never, yeah, here we go. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. Wonderful works. What do you think they're doing? Well, maybe they're helping people. Maybe they are displaying love. But if they're not doing the will of the, the Father which is in heaven, then just doing the good deeds isn't going to save you. So there's there's that side of the there's there's that side, but then the pendulum swings to the other side and Let me see. We have over here in Matthew chapter 27 or 22. No, what am I looking? Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of 25. Two, five, they're, they're similar things. Uh, so there's this final judgment here, Matthew 25, and it begins in 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit on the throne. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate one from another, set the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. And the sheep are going to be cast away. I won't read the whole thing, but the sheep are going to, the goats are going to be cast away, and the sheep are going to uh, come to be with the Lord. So. The the goats, these are the goats here in verse 44. Then they shall answer him on the left hand, up here in verse 41. Then they shall answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hunger or thirsty or a stranger or naked and sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? And he shall answer them saying, verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So back in Matthew 22, there's the great commandment, love God and love your neighbor. And here in, in 25, you have the sheep and the goats and the goats are being cast away. But what's the reason they're being cast away? Well, there were people that you saw who were hungry, who were thirsty, who were a stranger. Is, is there, they're in a strange land. Uh, they didn't have clothes naked. They were sick. They were in prison. And you didn't do anything to help. You didn't minister. He says, if you, and, and he says, in as much as you did it not to one of the least of these. So find a person, even the least of people. Find that person and help them. This is the idea that 1 John chapter 3 is trying to get across. 1 John chapter 3. I'm going to type it in here so it goes into my history. Verse 19, hereby we know we shall know or we know that we're of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Now, verse 20, for if our heart condemn us, if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. We like to doubt, don't we? And, you know, in verse 19, it talks about assuring our hearts before him. And then it talks about our heart condemning us and our heart not condemning us. We like to doubt. We like to... We like to question, well, am I really following God? Am I really saved? Am I really, you know, a lot of people say, well, I've done so many bad things that God can't, for, you know, I've done so many bad things that, that God can't or won't forgive me. 
which of course the Bible doesn't teach. Anybody can be forgiven. There is no sin that, uh, that repentance and obedience won't fix. The blood of Christ can wash away all sins. It has that power. But in Christians, sometimes as Christians, we think to ourselves, am I doing enough? Am I being a good Christian? And you have two outcomes of that, right? You have your heart condemning you, saying, no, I'm not. You feel bad about yourself. You're always trying to do better. To always, and, and you, I can imagine there are Christians who just, it just tears them up because they, there's always something else that they could have done. And verse 20 is for, for people like that. If our heart condemn us, God's greater than our heart. So you don't believe that you're doing well enough. Well, that's why God gives us this passage. Are you loving people? Are you loving people not just in the way you talk, but in the way you act? Are you showing that love to people? Well, that's a, that gives you assurance. So you may be down on yourself saying, well, I'm just not doing enough. I'm not a good enough Christian. And God looks and he says, are you showing love to people? And I guess that's, that's really useful because the simple fact of the matter is we all can always do something more. There's always something that we can do more, right? If I had just helped one more person, or maybe, maybe I, you know, there's, there's always, what are you doing? Well, add something else to it. Well, there's still something more that you can do. You, you can give money to, you know, some money to help, help this person, help that person. And, and okay, well, I'm doing all that I can. Well, no, you can, you can sell your house and give some money. There's, there's something more you can do. And you can, Oh man, you could even go to the hospital and donate your organs. I wouldn't um, wouldn't advise doing that, but the point I'm trying to make is, if you really thought about it, there's always something more you could do to help somebody, and there's always something more you can do as a Christian. But what God is saying is, you shouldn't let your heart condemn you like that. God is greater than our heart and knows all things. God's the one who keeps the tally, and God's the one who knows if we're following him. And what he says is, let the love that you're showing to people give you assurance that you're actually following him, that you're of the truth. What does he want? Well, it says, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, we have confidence toward God, and God wants us to have confidence. He wants our hearts to be focused on following God, not because we feel guilty, not because we're condemning ourselves and, and downing ourselves, but he wants us to be confident toward him. And there's benefits of being confident toward God, isn't there? Or aren't there? Aren't there benefits to being confident toward God? What might some of the benefits be? Well, if I'm confident toward God, it might be easier to spread the gospel because you tell somebody, do you want to go to heaven? And if they ask you, yeah, I want to go to heaven. Are you going to heaven? You say, well, I'm not sure, but you should do what I say. You, you should follow what the Bible says so that you can go to heaven. Well, how do you know that you're going to heaven? I'm not sure. I, I'm, I don't have that assurance in, in my mind. You, you see how that would be, tough to convince somebody. Whereas if I'm following God and I'm doing, doing what is needed and, and I say, do you want to go to heaven? And they say, well, are you going to heaven? You say, absolutely, I'm going to heaven. Well, hey, that's a, that's a cool thing. That's a great thing. So if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And, and there are some nice benefits of that. So this love that we have, it's not just, and, and here's, another, here's another thought here. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. This love 
that we're supposed to we're supposed to have it's the the action love it's not designed just to be self sacrificial it's not designed just to just so that we can give everything that we have but in fact when we show love to other people there's benefit to that right i love other people it helps me calm my soul it helps me get rid of my doubts because of the love that i'm showing and that's a good thing because god wants god wants us to realize i'm he wants us to realize and he, 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 that that he's watching us he knows what we're doing and he acknowledges the things that we're doing and he wants us to have confidence toward him are you going to heaven you should be able to say yes to that if you're not sure well think about the reassurance now if you're not sure that you're going to heaven it could be because you know you're you're actually doing something against god you know you're actually working against him and that's a problem but if you're trying your hardest and you're doing the commands like you, you're told to do, you hear God's word, you believe, you've believed his word, you've repented of, his, of your sins, you've confessed, you've been baptized, and now you're in that, that last part there, live faithfully, and you're trying to live as faithfully as possible. Yeah, you're going to mess up. But John keeps keeps reassuring us that we have Jesus there. Like, for example, in, in chapter 2, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is our advocate. In 1 John 1, 7, G, the blood of Jesus Christ washes us from all sins or cleanses us from all sins. Here, if our heart condemns us, so if we don't feel adequate or suitable, God's greater than our heart. He knows all things and he's telling us you should be assured by these things all right this is the this is as far as we'll go next time we'll look at 22 and 23 and until then i hope you uh, i'm really glad that i'm really glad that you watched this video i hope you're getting something out of class and uh, i really wish you a blessed day you have a wonderful time.